Well, for years, scientists have been warning us about the dire strait of the Great Barrier Reef. They have harped on about bleaching and destruction, all the result of climate change. Of course, well, as it turns out, the reef is actually in wonderful condition, as we have reported on this show before. Yet again, a new report by the same people who have told us about the dire situation of the reef has now found coral cover in the Great Barrier Reef is at a 36-year high. Most media outlets have ignored this story or managed to wrap a war pit to suit their doomsayer agenda because the existence of record coral amount goes anything against everything that they have said about climate change. We think news like this is worth celebrating, so joining us now on Outsiders is our dear friend to this show, marine physicist Peter Ridd. Peter, great to see you. How are you? Peter, you have become the bearer of great news on this show. We've, uh, every time you pop up, there's great news that most of the media seems to ignore, but you bring us to outsiders. So tell us the latest great news about the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. We've got this uh, spectacular, you know, by coincidence to some extent, record high coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef. This is despite supposedly four devastating, unprecedented bleaching events since only 2016, which wiped out maybe 93% of the coral in one and then another 50% in another. And then somehow we ended up with record high coral cover in 2022. You just, you just got to wonder uh, how, how bad um, some of these institutions have been in terms of exaggerating uh, the loss of the corals in these events. And yet despite this overwhelmingly good news, some leftists in the media, including the ABC, have been looking for negatives in, in these latest uh, revelations. Oh, absolutely. You've got to realise that this is very, very bad. And it's bad because apparently all the, the, uh, the corals that have grown back are these uh, Acropora species. They, these are actually the beautiful uh, staghorn and plate corals. And mm. these are apparently in such high quantities now that it's really, really bad. <laughs> um, but, yes. but the funny thing is, if you, go back, if you go back to 2018, which is not so long ago, I can show you a paper where they were saying that the bleaching was going to kill all these Acropora uh, uh, species and we were going to have none of them left and it was a disaster. So it doesn't matter whether you have not enough or too many of these beautiful Acroporas. These are the really ones that, that people go to see, actually. Uh, it doesn't matter how many or how little of them, it's going to be a disaster. James. <laughs> Peter, in 2016, back in 2016, the tourism industry oh. was warning and the environmentalists were warning that there would be a hit of a billion dollars to the Australian economy because people wouldn't come and see the reefs and they wouldn't see the coral. Wouldn't this be a great time and a great excuse with the world opening back up after the pandemic for the Albanese government to tell Tourism Australia, hey, come <laughs> on, come on the down reef. to Australia, come see the reef, everything's fine. Precisely. Where is our government? Where is our state government sending this news out and saying our reef is the best it's ever been since we've been able to start measuring it? Instead, what we have is companies like Google and Coles, you know, putting aside huge amount of funds to save the reef. But of course, every time that these these, uh, you know, virtue signalers do that, they're actually sending out the signal, the reef is doomed, the reef is terrible, and you should just talk to some of the tourist operators up around Cairns. Every time it happens, they just put their hands in their head, head in their hands and go, you know, what can we do right here? The reef is wonderful, but everybody's running down our premier tourist industry. It's crazy. Um, Peter, I was recently in London, and like any trip to London, nothing beats chatting to the cab driver when you're in the back of the cab. The London cabbie is a great institution of wealth and knowledge. Um, and as soon as he realised I was Australian, he said, ah, oh, I'd love to go and see the Great Barrier Reef, but it's dead. <laughs> and I said, well, well, hang on. And this was, you know, uh, I, you know, I was lost for words. I said, "How? What, what makes you believe that? And he cited a documentary that he'd seen recently on the BBC. I presume he was referring, but I don't know, to the David Attenborough one. Uh, we also had President Obama uh, a few years back uh, telling people that the Great Barrier Reef was dead. It was the last chance for his daughters to see it. Um, you're right to point out that the government should be doing it, but the damage has been so intense and the climate change industry is so uh, successful in telling this story about the dead reef. Uh, how can we overcome it? And more importantly, Peter, how can you get the message out to, uh, to people who want, as a marine physicist, that there is a future and a strong future for the reef? 
Well, this um, record high coral cover is a tremendous opportunity. It is by coincidence that we happen to be uh, very high at the moment, but you know that those, these coincidences do happen. You get very high coral, but we should use it because it completely goes against um, what the institutions have been telling. It proves without a shadow of a doubt that they are that many of them are completely untrustworthy. I have to say that the AIM should be congratulated for for this. Uh, Results, Absolutely. you know, it's um, they didn't uh, fudge it like some other results have been fudged by some other institutions. Um, so we, it, it is about time that we have our opposition uh, in both state and federal parliament say we want some quality assurance. We've been told that the reef has uh, has been you know killed over the last few years. Uh, clearly, this is not the case. I think it's now time for a bit of quality assurance. If I could come back to your uh, London example, what we're doing to our Great Barrier Reef would be like the British government sending out the message that Big Ben is collapsing, the Tower of London is hopeless, and don't worry about Tower Bridge and, and Buckingham Palace because they're just a slum, not worthwhile going to see. This is what we're doing to our premier uh, tourist attraction. Well, Peter Ridd, it's always great to chat to you and it's always great that you keep bringing us good news. And uh, thanks so much for keeping an eye on the reef and reporting these stories to us. Uh, it's great news and uh, certainly one of my favourite uh, experiences in Australia. Thanks so much.